Okay, so now that we're actually able to have users move, uh, but they can overwrite other players' moves, we want to go ahead and do something to fix that. Another problem that we might not have noticed is that when the game's over, we can still make additional moves. That's probably also not very good. We want to be able to stop the user from moving when the game's over and when somebody's already won. In fact, it would be nice to tell the user that somebody's already won as well. So let's concentrate on that first problem first. Let's uh, figure out how we can stop a user from moving into a place where there's already a move. So we can do that pretty easily. All we have to do here is another if. So we're going to say if square.innerText is equal to an empty value, then we'll go ahead and let the user move. Else, we'll set a message saying that square is already used. So all we have to do here is say, all right, let's look at the square. And if nobody's already moved there, if that square is empty, then we're going to go ahead and let that user use that square. Otherwise, we're going to tell that user the square is empty, and we're not going to switch the turn or anything. So if we refresh the page and we try to use that, Say we keep clicking here, we're not actually getting anything. We're not actually letting the user move. But as soon as they click on one of those other squares, it's switching. But we're still not able to end the game when the uh, turn is over. In order to do that, we're going to have to add a couple of a uh, couple of other things here. Now, detecting that a uh, that the win, you know, if you think about tic tac toe, there there are a couple of different ways a user can win. A user can get three in a, this row. A user can get three in the second row user can get three in the third row, or a user can get all of the three in a one of the three columns, or cross the diagonals here. So that means there's a lot of ways that we can win. So if we want to do something that's kind of complicated and there are a lot of ways to do it, it's usually easier to just write a function to handle that. So we're going to go ahead and write a function over here, and we'll put that right here under switch turn. We'll call this function uh, Let's call this function check row. So we're going to check for three in a row here. We're going to give this function more than one variable. We're going to say a, b, c, and a move. And what this function is going to do is we're going to call this, you know, on three different squares to see if uh, if those three squares match a particular move. But in order to do this, we're going to need to get uh, be able to get the values. So First thing we'll do, we'll go ahead and this is our first function that's actually going to return a result. Now the functions we've dealt with so far, all those functions just do something. But this function is going to give something back. We're going to give, a back, give back either a true or false to see if this row is a three in a row. So we're going to call that variable, we're going to create a new variable. This variable we're going to call result. And you see I'm declaring this variable with a variable or with a VAR. The reason I'm doing that is because this is a variable that's just going to be used temporarily. Up here when I use document.turn, I want that to last for as long as I'm using this web page. Uh, but via var result, I just want that to last for as long as I need it here to, in order to check to see if this row is, is, a, is, a, is a three in a row. So I'm going to set that equal to false. I'm going to start off and say that that's false. And what I'm going to do here is, well, I need to determine, you know, is the box in A the box in B and the box in C all uh, all the same move, but oh now I've got a problem here because I don't have any way to get the boxes. I don't know how to tell if this is an X unless I'm moving in that box. You know, up here when we use next move, we're passing in square, but I don't know how to tell you know what the squares are. So I'm going to create before I even finish this function, I'm going to create another function. We'll call this function get box, and get box is going to give me a box based on an based on a number. Now, get box is going to use similar to what we did above when we set a message, document .get element by ID and getting message. But get box is going to retrieve a box from the screen. Now, unfortunately, the only ID we have is message. We don't have any IDs for our squares, but we'll go ahead and give those IDs. ID, we'll call it S1, and we'll go ahead and copy this. Control C, or Command C or com to copy, and Command V to paste if you're on a Mac, uh, and if you're on Windows, Control C to copy or Control V to paste. And we'll go ahead and set this to S2, S3, and S4. We'll go ahead and name these S4, 5, and 6. 
down here, we will call these S7, 8, and 9. Just to have very nice, simple ways to refer to these. And when we retrieve the box, we'll use the same code we did above. We, you know, let's go ahead and scroll up so we can see it way up at the top there, right up here. We use document document element by ID. We're going to say document, give me the element that's called S plus whatever number is there. And you know what? We're going to return this so that we give it back. So get document doc, or doc get element by ID dot inner text. Now get box will tell us what's there. So we can check this in our if if get box a equals move. Now we're going to use a, a new symbol, and this is and. So we're going to check. We're going to use ampersand. If you hit shift and seven, it should be the it should be the character there. Uh, ampersand is going to say, you know what? We're going to want to see if all of these things are true. So get box A is true, and get box B equals move is true, and get box C equals move is true. If all of those things are true. We're going to set our result to true. Then we're going to return our result. So if you think about this, if I call check row 1, 2, 3, x, and 1, 2, and 3 are all x, then I'm going to have a true result. And this row is going to be good. Uh, and if not, then it's going to be false. So this gives me the quick and easy way to check to see if there's a, or a 3 in a row. But I need to pass in all of those different uh, different combinations. So I'm going to create another function here, and this function is going to be called check for winner, and we'll pass in move to this function. And what check for winner will do is we're going to do the same thing we did below. We're going to say var result is equal to false, and if check row. So we got to think about all of the possible combinations that we could have here. Uh, we could have well, one, two, three. So if there's a row, uh, all three in a row in the top, then we're going to, instead of an and here, we're going to do an or, because any three in a row makes us win the game. So we're going to do or, which is uh, represented by, you know, if you remember the curly braces to the right of your P key, should have an or symbol, which you can get if you hit shift, you know, right next, to it. there's also a backslash on that key. Uh, and we're going to say check row, well, four, five, and six is also a valid combinate or valid win, right? If you have a X or an O in all three of the middle squares, then that, that's also a win. And we also will check, let's go ahead and check row seven, eight, nine. Uh, so that's all of the rows, but they're also columns. So we have to think about the columns. So if we were to do this, you know, let's do this in a row, you can see well, that kind of looks like the board. So one, two, three is good. Four, five, six is good. 7, 8, 9 is good, but we could also do check row 1, 4, 7, because that would be the first column. We could also do check row 2, 5, 8, because you can see here, going down the middle, that would give me a column of wins. We could do check row 3, 6, 9. So that gives us all the rows and columns, but we also have to do the diagonals, which would be 1, 5, 9 and 3, 5, 7. So we'll go ahead and do 1, 5, 9, move, and check row 3, 5, 7, move. And when we're done with all of that, if any of those things are true, we're going to set result equal to true. So what check for winner will do is it will check every possible way that a user could win. Now, now that we've written a check for winner function, we should probably actually do something with it. In order to do something with it, we will go ahead and, you know, in the uh, in the switch turn function, before we do anything, we'll say if check for winner document dot turn. So, if we have a winner, that will be true, and if we don't have a winner, that will be false check for winner. Let's go ahead and congratulate the winner. Congratulations. Document.turn. 
you win. There we go. So now we can tell that user they won. Now, if we don't want any further switches to uh, happen, if we don't want the turn to switch at all, we can just go ahead and say else. And we can actually just do else if, just like this. So if we have a winner, then we're going to set that message. If we don't have a winner, we're going to go ahead and switch that user, or switch the uh, current player. Now there's a problem though. We now need to move set message because otherwise after we set congratulations, we're just going to reset that message. And you know, if we were to save this now and come back over here and refresh and we'll make somebody win here. So we didn't actually get a, a winner here and we're still going and everybody's an X. So we've got a problem. This is actually a pretty good opportunity because now we can check to see what went wrong. So if you're using a Chrome browser, you actually have some pretty good tools for this. We're going to go ahead and go to Developer and you know under View in your Chrome browser, go to Developer and click JavaScript Console. And what this is going to do is pop, pop up some information here. And if there's an error or anything, we should be able to see that here. Um, it doesn't look like I have a, an error. Uh, and the reason why I'm getting this, it's X's turn is because, well, you know, we never actually reconnected this set message. So every time we get a winner, we're actually setting a message here that says congratulations, but we're doing it so, f we're then resetting it to this next uh, message so quickly that we're not actually seeing anything. Now, if this had been an error, you know, let's say maybe I spelled document wrong. Maybe I spelled it D-C-O-U-M, you know, uh, D-C-O-U-M-E-N-T. And I try to do that and I hit refresh. I'm going to get a problem and you know certain things are going to work and certain things aren't but you know if I go into that developer javascript console I should see here you know this variable isn't defined so this will tell me something that's going on here in fact it will even tell me what line it's happening on so I can go back and I can then look at that value and see what I might have done wrong there sometimes it's hard to find the errors even for programmers that have been programming for and developing software for years it's hard to find errors but that makes it a lot easier. So let's go ahead. We will take this set message and we will put it within this else if and then we'll put it within this else. Let's go ahead and make sure everything is nicely formatted so that we can read it very easily. So now if we start this again, but we're still letting a user move after uh, after the game is over. So now we can know when the game is over, but we're still letting that user move. So let's go ahead and solve that problem in the next uh, in the next lesson here. Right now though, we have a pretty well functioning game. We're able to do quite a lot. You know, we can interact here, we can figure out when somebody wins. Now nobody won. You know, we can't really do anything at this point, but uh, we can uh, we can do quite a lot. So Let's uh let's work on the next lesson here.